Hello, Woda fans. I'm Jackie Fox. We're going to be talking about the starter quests for various characters. Now, these are always going to have four distinct missions to get most of the bonuses. Do not continue. Super easy. Just, you don't, don't know game over and you'll be fine. You wouldn't even want to continue. Why pay Viz to continue a free energy mission anyways? Do not use items. Most Woda players don't. Generally, defeat two or more enemies simultaneously. This can be the tricky one. And use that character's limit break, which usually isn't hard and they will give you crystals to build up AP as well so that you can clear this quickly and effectively. And it usually ends up just being kind of a test of how well you understand the character's kit. So what I've set up here is Kefka's ally buff on Whisper. Whisper is really only buff on herself, but I'm also planting her here on the bridge to force them to stand in a cross pattern for trying. That's going to take out everybody but the mage, and I'm also going to book it over here um, just to be prepared for where the Final Fantasy VI characters will be entering from, as they're really going to be the main challenge here. Because Celeste isn't getting a runic uh, blade up, I could use trying to hit her, uh, especially in Terra, but really any of these units remaining on the field and unconfused is terrible for Kefka and also hitting himself is probably a really bad idea. But as long as you can land this, you're going to take out Locke, you're going to do pretty decent damage to Terra and you're probably gonna confuse Celeste as well. And from here, you can just kind of ping out the mage and try to move Whisper in such a place that she can't easily be hit by big AoEs because Terra is gonna be able to use them. And she really likes to hit two people with Meltdown. Now, there's a lot of things that you can do here if you're feeling like you want a little bit of insurance. You can use um, the re-raise skill, but really just smacking these suckers with something like that, turning down their magic, is a good way to go. But hopefully you would finish them off with that. Again, Trine is really effective against these two because they can both be silenced really easily. But I don't think that that's going to matter because I'm... Oh, I'm going to put enough damage on Celeste that she's not going to make it to the Trine part. And that's a clear. We actually got three KOs in one hit. So next up is going to be Addison Ray, And I think hers is pretty interesting because it uses a lot of different portions of her offensive kit. The first and mo uh, first that will be important is her skill Chill Out, which is going to remove Courage. And that is going to enable her to get what is probably one of the easier 2-in-1 hits on here. But we're talking about Addison Ray here. She does some pretty impressive AoE damage. She'll have a lot of opportunities to get a 2-for-1. So what I do here is probably go back and go ahead and get that triggered off. Uh, you could also go with her LB here. That will also be pretty effective. But uh, I just tend to like Sorcery Shuffle. And I also like to leave her AB or her LB for the actual characters and not just the random mobs. So what I'm going to want for her against this ninja is Breakthrough. However, I am not in range for that, so Barrier Bop is her ally buff, and that's going to sure all three of them up against everything that this map has to throw at them at this point. Actually, this is a this is an incredibly physical damage based map, so that is an incredible buff for it. I mean, you can see the wolves are barely doing any damage at all. And now that I can get in the ninja's face, I'm going to use that breakthrough because otherwise Addison Ray is about blind as fuck. Um, the only person who can possibly really hit the ninja on this map other than Addison Ray using breakthrough is the one that has Strider, uh, the one that's carrying the axe over his shoulder. Other than that, and, and like he can only do it if he gets lucky. Um, because most of their accuracy comes from their luck stat. But uh, as long as you take care of that, this is, as I said, a good place to employ her LB. You can also use her other skill. It doesn't, um, her other debuffing skill after you've applied your buffs and all that. 
that can be pretty effective, but they were already slowed, now they're slow and disabled. And really, I could probably let these guys just ping them off. Um, but again, she's got some pretty wide ranging AoE, so it's easy to get a two for one with Miss Addison Ray. Last up for this video is the Sweetheart Miranda character quest. The first thing you're going to want to do is move to the first crystal, turn yourself to the side and buff. Not necessarily in that order, but do make sure that you are facing away from the two enemies. This will trigger the AI of this guy right here who will get two turns before your next turn to move to your side. Now, this is going to line them up so that you can get a two for one here and these are really the easiest foes to take out on this map so they are the most reliably two for oneable if you can line this up the rest of the map is pretty easy pick up some ap i gave myself a re-raise on this turn completely superfluous completely unnecessary i probably could have just done nothing and had extra time, but I like getting re-raised on this maps just in case something goes wrong. I mean, I had the turn, might as well. Don't forget to use your limit break. And now I have a Ravis. That time I'm definitely going for the not doing anything. Although, you know, while I'm standing next to her, I should use her uh, partner buff. Yep, there we go, and that gets me a physical shield, which is going to be pretty helpful here. Again, this is also a pretty physical map, much like the Addison Ray map, um, which unfortunately makes this buff feel just completely useless on this map, but it is a good way to build up AP for her. I have used it twice. Um, because it's not terrible and it is kind of her single target buff and she can only get so much re-raise, you know? So here, again, all I've got to do is take these guys out. So one way that I end up going with this guy is just to build a chain on him and let him you uh, let Ravis actually use that chain to hopefully get a crit and take him out. She did not get the crit. I'm not sure that the crit necessarily would have taken him out, but I can stand next to him and just ping him out. Good job. So now we just have Sir O. And, oh, it's not going to be hard, especially after Ravis gets the stun. So that's how you finish up all of the uh, character quests for the new units. You got two between two weeks and, like, You've got between about two weeks and a month to be able to knock these out. So, anyways, thank you for watching. I've been your host, Jackie Fox. Check out the link in the description for access to the Jackie Fox Media Empire. Check out my books, links on how you can support the channel. But also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments what you thought of this one. Because I'm doing kind of a new thing here. And if you guys appreciate it, then I'll do this for the next set when they come out because I have to play through these at least three or four times anyways so I may as well share some insights on how it feels like the game wants me to do them to efficiently take out all the goals. Might as well record one of those runs for y'all and if you appreciate that let me know in the comments let me know by liking subscribing all those good things all those indicators I'm doing the right thing here and I'll make you another one uh, in I don't know a couple of weeks or maybe I'll do these one at a time for the future so that you can easily kind of okay this is the one I need to beat this is the video I'll watch hey tell me what you think of that in the comments and whatever you do I'll see you in the next one.